afternoon and welcome back to New Life Online for our online service this week. We pray that this service is an encouragement and a challenge to you as you get into God's Word with us and as we worship together uh, through the songs that we're going to be playing. Before that, we're going to join in prayer and commit our time together to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the chance again to come online, to gather around your Word, to join in worship. Father, we pray you will be glorified through the way we live our lives, through the things that you say to us and our responses to that. Lord, we pray that this will be a service, Lord, online, that, Lord, we hear from you and that, Lord, that you impact our lives in a real way today. In Jesus' name, amen. You are who you say you are. You'll do what you say you'll do. And you'll be who you've always been to us, Jesus. Our hope is in you alone. Our strength in your mighty name Our peace in the darkest day remains Jesus This we know We will see the enemy run This we know We will see the victory come. We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfailing. Our God, through the wilderness, our joy, in the heaviness our way where the seems there is no way jesus this we know we will see the enemy run this we know we will see the victory come We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfailing. And we trust you. We trust you. Your ways are higher than our own. We trust you. We trust you, your ways are higher than our own. We trust you, we trust you, your ways are higher than our own. We trust you, we trust you, your ways. Than our own. This we know. We will see the enemy run. This we know. We will see the victory come. We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfailing. This we know, we will see the enemy run. This we know, we will see the victory come. We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfailing. Jesus, you are unfailing. Oh, Jesus, you are unfailing.
you get your Bibles, we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15, which says this. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. I remember one time we had a a kid's birthday party and we'd organised to get the kids to take them to McDonald's and uh, afterwards we'd, uh, when when we'd got all the food, we'd asked them what they'd wanted and we brought it to the table and gave out the orders to the people that were there. I remember this one kid that was there on that day and they were a bit disappointed and I understand right there's nothing worse than ordering something and then somebody else gets something if you're out for tea or something and uh, they've ordered a thing that you would prefer to have but uh, normally as adults of course we'll just eat our meal smile and be grateful for all that God's blessed us with but this little child in particular was like I want what they've got I want what they've got I want to experience what they've got in their place. I don't want what I have. I'm I'm not happy with what is in my life. I want what they've got. I wonder if the, the default position in our lives, as we think about where we're at just now and where where you know God has brought us to in our lives today, I wonder if we're satisfied with what we have right now. Or if our lives are a constant sense of dissatisfaction, thinking things like, I want what they've got. You see, we live in this world of social media, which is all like, you know, we see everybody's highlights reel. And so we think that person's life is perfect. Uh, They've got it all wrapped up. I want what they've got. I want to experience the things they experience. I want to have what they have. I remember... Uh, one time when my wife was was out with with one of our nieces and and uh, she'd promised to get her a gift uh, of some kind and so they were in a shop and uh, the the girl picked up this uh, this toy and was like Auntie Tiff I need it and it was something that was probably useless and uh, Tiff says no we'll, we'll get you something better than that and then the next thing she wanted it and she says no Auntie Tiff I need it I need it. You see, I think sometimes we have this inherent desire in our lives as human beings to focus on what we don't have rather than what we do. You see, even right at the very start of the Bible, when Adam and Eve fell, the enemy tried to deceive Adam and Eve by showing them and telling them about what they didn't have making that seem more appealing than all the things that God had blessed them with. They could eat from every single other tree in the garden, but this one tree, because they didn't have access to that, somehow there was something that the enemy was able to entice them with. And I wonder if something of that is in our nature these days where where we may have access to all different kinds of stuff. You know, we are some of the most blessed people in the world, yet there's sometimes just that sense of dissatisfaction of, I need it, I need it want it. Sometimes in my own life I get this, well I've heard it described as gas. Now it's not some sort of weird medical condition. Gas is called gear acquisition syndrome. Gear acquisition syndrome is for those of you who love gadgets or or things that there's just this sense that you, you need to acquire something new, something new to play with, something that's been some of the reviewers on YouTube are showing and they think it looks like the next big thing, that something that you've got to have in your life because when you get it in your life, you'll think, well, my life is sorted now after that. I need it. I need it. And that sense of we could only have, it doesn't just happen in the Bible at the start. But what about in Scripture in Luke chapter 4, verse 9, verse 12 to 17? 
It says, late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. He replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so and everybody sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave the disciples to set before the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. You see here, the, the disciples, they brought what they only had. Only five loaves and two fish. They only had that. That's, they made that point. We only have. How is that going to feed all these people? But what we know from that story and what we've read there is that God can do so much more with what we only have than what we can ever truly imagine. You see, sometimes that in our lives we're so caught up in what we don't have, we miss what we do have. And it's time to stop focusing on what we don't have. And this morning, or whenever you're watching this, I pray that we realize that we can be grateful for what we already have. That we can actually uh, recognize and live in the power of what God has already given us. We need to have faith like a child, not be children. Paul talks about becoming mature. There's something about us that has to grow up. And so in children that goes, I need it. It's something that I, I want what they have. But we need to have the faith like a child. Even when the things that we think sound good and we think we need in our life, I want to remind us that God has says that he provides all that we need. One of my favorite verses in the Holy Scriptures, 2 Peter 1 verse 3, and it says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. I love that. We need to remember what we have. How many times have you been in a church service or you've watched something and we pray this, God, will you please be with us as we gather together? God's promised that he will. We need to accept what he has already said that he has given us, what he's already said that he was to would do. And reading through this passage from Ephesians, I was reminded about what we already have. Because knowing what we have can change how we live. Today is just a reminder of what we have in Jesus. And it's my prayer that this reminder of what we do have will change our lives. I pray that as the writer asks, that our eyes will be opened, that we'll have a fresh revelation of what we already have. The first thing I want us to remember today is that you can choose what you want to remember. It says in the scriptures, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them and my soul is downcast within me. That's a sad thing about what they would remember. But they say this, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. The children of Israel, you know, they, their mind, the mind works in an incredible ways and it can work both ways. It says that of the children of Israel that they remembered or they had this idea of what things were like back in Egypt. And, uh, you know, they, they sometimes remembered the fish and the bread, but they forgot about the slaves and the making the, the, the bricks without straw and the challenge that all that brought. They forgot about the murdering of their children and their beatings. And it, when it suited them and when the pressure was on, they thought, oh, weren't things amazing back in Egypt. We can have selective memory. But what that word reminds us is that this I call to mind. I wonder what you're calling to mind today. Are you calling to mind the goodness, the way that God's been faithful in your life in the past, the way he's brought you to where you are now? Or are you calling to mind a dissatisfaction, something of, a, of an annoyance as to what you feel at times that you are missing out on? Remember a family member once, they spoke about a time when they, they tithed and it was hard and they just made it by every month. It was a time where they were in real financial difficulty. And they look back on that as a kind of negative. But actually, when they broke down, when you break down exactly where they'd been, you can look back and say that they should never have been able to make ends meet. But because they were faithful to the Lord, that actually that was one of those powerful moments in their life. You see, you can choose to remember what you want to. And sometimes that depends on where you're at right now. 
the children of Israel, when they were moving on, they would build, they lifted this stone at one time, they built a stone and called it Ebenezer, the stone of celebration that said, thus far has the Lord has helped us. And we need to remember who God is. We need to remember that he is all powerful. We need to remember how he's been faithful, how he has promised what he has, and he's fulfilled what he's promised, how he is good. We need to remember that he's never failed and he's not about to start now. We need to remember the wonder that we had in him. You know, I, I, I don't know if, if when you became a Christian, like, like most people do, you know, when they, when they experience that and they're in wonder of who God is and what he has done. And there's a great Matt Redmond song that says, may I never lose the wonder, the wonder of your mercy. And maybe this morning you've lost some of that, that wonder. And my, my job today is to remind you what you have in him and let that wonder start to rise up again. In fact, before we remind what we have in him, I want to remind you this morning that you already have the wonderful promise of him. You have this amazing promise of him. You know, we need to know him better. Everything we need is found in Jesus. Every single thing. The answer to all of life's questions, the, 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 need of the, the, the deepest need of our soul is found in him. In Daniel 11 verse 32, you know, it says this amazing thing that they who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. We, you might think you need something, but what you need is to know him more. He has given us this wonderful invitation to get to know him. You know, that's so incredible for us. You know, God is not after the best. He is after the hungry. Those who, are, who hunger and thirst after him, the pure in spirit, those who want to please him. You know, I know my God. I know the King of Kings. He is in me. He is in you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in each and every one of us. And those who know their God are strong. It's not those who experience a great emotional encounter with him. They're amazing and we're so thankful for that. But it's those who know their God. It's from daily taking up our cross. It, everything ought to flow from that relationship. This morning, are you so thankful that you know him? I pray that, you, that something of that in your heart will just start again today. To be so delighted, to be so in wonder that we have this incredible privilege of knowing him. It's amazing that, uh, you know, you might think today that what you need is to win the lottery or what you need is the next thing or what you need is some form of relationship in your life. I want to tell you that every single thing we need is already found in him. If we know him, we have all that we need today. Everything you need. And it's either true or it's not. And if you're a Christian today, then, then really that, that is one of the foundations of, of really what we can believe today is that everything that we need is found in Him. Isn't it just such a blessing today to know that it's not the next fad that we need. We just need to get to know Him better. Another thing we need to remind you of what we already have is that we have been called to hope. We have a secure destiny. You know, even if the, if the worst thing comes to worse and our life is taken away from us, that we are in Him. And we have this incredible hope that that is not the end. You know, the Bible says that no eye has seen nor ear heard what is in store for those who love Him. I want others to know that hope that we've been called to. That we can have life in this life, but we also can have eternal life because of what Jesus has done. I'm so grateful this morning that we have been called to hope. Not called to something that will be that, that will fade or, or or you know go away, but we have been called to this incredible inheritance in him. And that's the third thing that we have been called to: a glorious inheritance. That we can be reminded today that we have a glorious inheritance. Inheritance. Inheritance is a funny thing. I heard of the basketball player Shaq, and uh, people were t telling him because he's he's made so much money through basketball and through some of his business ventures, his media work and stuff like that, that uh, that he says, "Oh, your kids are rich," and he says, "No, my kids aren't rich. I'm rich, but my kids aren't rich." And he says that everything that is going to happen afterwards, his kids are going to have to work for it. He's not just going to hand over everything to them so that they can just get it because they're his children. They're going to have to work for it. 
But here's the amazing thing about our God. The New Testament gives great emphasis to our rich inheritance. As children in God's family, we get to share in the family fortune that everything God has belongs to us. The Apostle Paul adds, I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance he has given to his people. What benefits do do we inherit? As children in God's family, we're given the riches of his grace, his kindness, his patience, glory, wisdom, power, and mercy. We also inherit eternal life. And God puts his spirit inside us now as a guarantee of all that's to come. What an inheritance. You're far richer than you realize, which is why Paul could write with confidence, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Your inheritance today is priceless it's pure it's permanent it's protected nobody can take it from you in him we have all these things what an incredible privilege you know your mind may have been focused on today on what you don't have maybe maybe ebay or a or a a site of some kind has been dominating your thoughts i know it's done that to mine at some sorts sometimes and you know you're like oh if only i could get that this morning let it be or whenever you're watching this let it be a reminder that you already have so much you have all that you need in him you have an incredibly glorious inheritance. The fourth thing that you have today, you have his incomparably great power. That's an incredible thing this morning to know, that we have his incomparably great power. That same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in each and every one of us. You know, today we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. Not because of anything that we've done, but because of what he has done. And he won that great victory for us on the cross. He won that great victory for you on the cross. Today we can know that in him we have absolutely everything that we need. You know, this morning you might have been focusing on what you don't have. You might have been thinking and letting your eyes get turned to the left. And you know, this is not to minimize need. Need is something that all of us go through at times. Or it can at least feel like that. We go through these times where there are things that we need in our lives. But the Word of God reminds us today that my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. Our Heavenly Father is not a stingy God. He is a rich, generous Father who pours out His gifts upon His children and we are His children. Today, let's not think on what we need, but let's be reminded of what we have. Let's not minimize what we have. Be like the disciples who think, but we only have this. You know, God can do so much with your little. Don't minimize what you already have. Let's be reminded that this morning through what the Word of God tells us that we already have Him. What a privilege. We already have Him. Let's be reminded that in Him we already have, uh, we've been called to hope. That even though death might take us, that's not the end. We have hope, an unshakable hope. And Hebrews reminds us that this hope is the anchor for our soul. We have that today. We have a glorious inheritance as his children. And we are serving a generous, generous father. Let's be reminded today that his incomparably great power is in us. That same power that raised him from the dead. That same power that changed absolutely everything in history lives and dwells in each and every one of us. We have access to that today. You know, the, one of the, the great inventions I'm told over the last, I don't know however many years, has been the Tesla. And uh, people love the look of that car and the, the, the things that that can do. The, it's like the ultimate gadgets gadget. Um, not quite managed to get my hands on one of them yet, but uh, but the Tesla is an incredible to get you so far in your car. You've got these Tesla power points now that you can access and tap your car into. But here's the thing: unless that car is plugged in to the source, it can't do anything. It's like so many of the great gadgets that I love, and many of you. 
experience. Maybe, maybe have you, many of you, I'm sure, use your mobile phones and different things like that. But, but today, we can know and we can tap into the source that the power of His Holy Spirit, that we will be reminded that that same power is available to us today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everything that we have in you. And Lord, as we've simply thought on that whenever we're watching that today, Lord, just let that just do our souls so good today, to be reminded of everything that we have in you. What an incredible privilege, Lord. What an incredible privilege to be part of your family, to, Lord, have you, to have that promise of you, Lord, to have this hope that we have, an unshakable hope, to have a glorious inheritance and to have that incomparably great power. Lord, there's nothing compares to living within each and every one of us. Father, today, may we take hope in these, Lord, short uh, points today, Lord, that remind us of what we have in you. Thank you, Lord. Let our hearts be full of gratitude today. In Jesus' name, amen. is power in his name for the stone was rolled away mountains bowed down before Jesus Christ our risen Lord Jesus Christ our risen Of our great and matchless King Seated high on the throne You shall reign forevermore You shall reign forevermore Mighty Saviour
Thank you for joining us at New Life Online. If we can be of any help to you, then do drop us an email at admin at newlifeshetland.com or pastor at newlifeshetland.com and we will pick those up when we come back from our holidays. In the meantime, we hope you have a great week and we will catch you next time at New Life Online. God bless. Hello and welcome to New Life News. Here's what's coming up this week. On a Sunday morning, we have our prayer at 10 a.m. in the Sandview Neighbourhood Centre, followed by our in-person service at 11. Our online service is posted to YouTube at 5 p.m. on our New Life Chat and Livestreams YouTube channel. Subscribe to stay up to date. Our Hour of Power prayer time is going to be off until the 1st of August. It will return on Monday the 1st of August back at Islesborough at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Or if you're joining us online, it will be 6.40 until 7.20. Kids Club isn't just for time time as we have our summer club through the holidays every Wednesday from 2 to 4. Our Keys to Freedom course will be beginning on Thursday the 28th of July and that will take place in Lizzie Robertson's house. If you'd like some more information on how to be part of that then talk to Lizzie today or contact her and our details can be found in Church Suite. On August the 21st we're hoping to have a baptismal service. It's going to take place in the sea. If you've never followed the command of Jesus to be baptised, then why not come and talk to myself about it? See what it means to be baptised and how you can take part on that day. As I said, it's a command of Jesus. It's something that he told us to do. So if you're a follower of Jesus and you've never been baptised, then it's a really important step in your Christian faith. Come and have a chat and see what it's all about. Tiff and I are actually going away on a holiday tomorrow. So after today, uh, we're going to be off for a couple of weeks. It's going to be back on the 2nd of August. If you want to drop me an email at pastor at newlifeshetland.com, I'll collect that when I come back. If you'd like any more information on any of the events I've said today, please contact us at admin at newlifeshetland.com or on any of our social medias. But that's all for now and have a good week.